the evidence that was um, used to convict Troy Davis uh, in the first place was, um, was weak, uh, it was contradictory. It took a jury only a few hours to decide Troy Davis was guilty of murdering a police officer in Savannah, Georgia, and a few more hours to send him to death row. Troy Davis, unfortunately, will soon face an execution date. Police officer Mark McPhail was working an off-duty job here. He was providing security at night for this bus station and for this Burger King restaurant that is currently out of business. There was a homeless man in this parking lot who was being harassed and intimidated. He yelled for help. The officer ran over, and seconds later, Officer Mark McPhail was shot and killed. Troy Davis has always maintained his innocence. Since the trial, uh, the case against him has come unraveled. There were huge questions and remain huge questions about the integrity of the investigation. There's evidence that was available uh, even at the, uh, at the time of the uh, original trial that uh, the police were engaged in uh, wrongdoing and, and misconduct. The primary reason he was convicted, the witness testimony. The slain police officer's wife agrees. They were just so adamant about what they saw, when they saw it. The Innocence Project has exonerated 273 individuals who were wrongly convicted. 75% of those cases relied on eyewitness identification. One of the witnesses, Dorothy Farrell, she testified initially that she was able to identify Troy Davis as the shooter from a great distance. She was on a second floor balcony across a road at one o'clock in the morning under very poor lighting conditions. It really would have been impossible for her to have been able to identify the face of the perpetrator. And if you look back at the initial police statements by the witnesses, um, there's a, a, la a great deal of uncertainty around exactly what the perpetrator was wearing. One of the witnesses he was looking out from heavily tinted windows in a car, which made it difficult for him to identify what color the perpetrator's shirt and shorts were. The descriptions of the perpetrator vary greatly um, with respect to height, build, and complexion. Tunnel vision occurs when the police uh, identify a suspect and decide that that suspect is going to be the target of their um, further investigation to the exclusion of all others. The man who admitted to harassing the homeless person went to police the next day and told them he saw Troy Davis shoot the officer. Sylvester, or Red Coles as he was known, came to the police the day after the shooting of Officer McPhail. He came to the police precinct with a lawyer and he identified Troy Davis as the shooter. The police believed Red Coles and began to focus entirely on Troy Davis as the suspect. Wanted posters went up all over Savannah. A reward offered to catch the so-called dangerous cop killer. Once the police officers focused on Troy Davis as the suspect, they disregarded clues that pointed either away from Troy Davis um, and importantly towards Red Coles. Mr. Young was the homeless man who was beaten and whose beating is what brought Officer McPhail to the scene of the crime. When Mr. Young first saw Red Coles, he identified Mr. Coles as the person who had beaten him. That identification should really have sparked law enforcement's interest in Red Coles as the shooter. Coles was part of a community that had a non-snitch culture, meaning that it would be highly unusual for a young black man to snitch or to implicate another young black man, given that the police were not seen as allies. It's curious that the police didn't examine the motivations of Sylvester Coles. Red Coles was known to have a 38, the same weapon that was used to shoot Officer McPhail, and was known to have it in his possession within a half an hour of the shooting. And even though the police knew that, they never looked for the gun. Had law enforcement begun to suspect that Red Coles 
uh, was an, a valid alternative suspect, they could have started an independent investigation of him. Troy Davis's photograph had been widely circulated in the media shortly after the crime and identified as the lead suspect. By the time that the eyewitnesses were brought back in to try to make identifications, they had already been tainted. The Savannah Police Department conducted a reenactment of the crime using all of the witnesses, and they placed red coals at the reenactment as a witness and not a suspect. They brought red coals as if he was a consultant, um, which obviously would plant a very strong suggestion in the witnesses' minds that of whoever they saw that night, red coals couldn't be the bad guy. In doing this, they may have contaminated or overwritten witness memories that would have identified Coles as a shooter rather than as just another bystander. Several of them have subsequently come forward and talked about how Red Coles was behaving erratically that night, changed his clothing, asked um, individuals to provide cover for him. Sylvester Coles yes. came up to you after the shooting mm -hmm. and said, will you hold my gun? Will I hold my yes, sir. We talked to Tanya Johnson near her old home across the street so from the crime scene. He and he opened the screen door. This screen door here? This screen door, which this was not here. It was just like wood. It was a wooden screen door. This was tore out. He opened the door, set the guns here, and shut the door back. And you, did you think he did the shooting? Yes, sir. Did you ask him? No, How but come? the way he was acting, I was Why scared. Didn't... You were scared to ask him? Yeah, I was scared. I was scared of him. Still scared of him now, but. Today you're scared of yes, him? Yes, sir. This crime was really quite horrific and had to be very terrifying for the entire community of Savannah and also for the police department who lost a young police officer who had lived a life of good service to his community, had a wife and a young son. Well, you have a situation that is extremely emotionally charged for the police themselves. Um, when they testified that they wanted to find the real killer, that they were not trying to make a case against Troy Davis just because he was Troy Davis, I think that's true. Um, it only makes sense. But I also think that their judgment was clouded by emotion because one of their own was the victim. The risks in this case of starting over uh, might have been not getting any conviction in the case. Uh, and it might have seemed to the police uh, and the prosecutors uh, that uh, any conviction for a serious um, crime that involved a police officer was better than none. For good reason, th there's the call for justice. There's the call to bring, to find the, the person who shot off Officer McPhail and bring them to justice. But unfortunately, when passions are inflamed, that cry for justice can get out of control. Um, and, and I very much fear and think that's one of the things that happened in the Troy Davis case. Mm -hmm.